this entire title called uh, you know menstrual literature or menstrual narratives has a a very very important situation in itself there are there are things which have been into there are uh, there are identities there are language orientations there are different ways in which we can uh, we we do speak about with people and there are uh, identities with which you have now i have taken this book by ann sexton called uh, sexing the body which is which have titled it as menstruation as the cooling metaphor to the world of women now before i begin the very idea of this all of you should listen to me very carefully because this is something which is very specific of women and be belonging to a culture background society and patriarchy like mine it would be very difficult or rather i should say it would be impossible for me to uh, you know come up uh come up with an area like this or come up with a uh, with an agency like this to speak to the others because because it is not a taboo only for women but it is a taboo for men too to speak on this area anywhere so keeping that in mind i will begin my lecture by uh, stating a very idea which says that it begins with the idea states that the historiography of narratives has had menstrual time both for men and women what exactly do i mean by the historiography of narratives both for men and women is that this idea or this agency with which we are speaking or this identity with which we are discussing the very logic of the world that we live in or the very logic of the social spectrum that we live in has a history in the way how many things have been presented whether it is the question of man or whether it's a question of women there is a time in which they are not accepted they are considered dirty they are considered illiterate they are considered uh, you know out of the bounds in which the society exists but then but then what is more prominent is women as it is sunday today and i am a very prominent christian believer as well uh, you know very very prominent christian idea with which i am here i wanted to quote the whole thing or rather i should say i wanted to quote the whole idea by quoting a text or an idea from the bible in the book of genesis there is this uh, chapter 7 verse 11 12 and 24 which says this it says all the foundations of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was open the 40 days and 40 nights and the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the waters increased and bare up the ark and it was lift up above the earth and the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days this is most important lines that i could find to begin my lecture because it is not that i'm trying to begin my lecture being it biblical or making it biblical as a reference is not that why i'm making to begin from that point of view is that the time in which noah was into the ark with all his three children and their wives and his wife with with that family into the ark where there were there were animals who who, who were clean and unclean as well who were there into the um, you know in the in the very question of the lifestyle which they had what is more prominent for us to understand in this very picture into the into the into the society here is that that where did noha have the clock there was no sunrise there was no sunset there was no there was it was just rain and how did they calculate that it was 40 days the very question the only proof that they have that they were into the ark or it was raining for 40 days or it was 150 days where they both stayed together is the menstrual period that all the women there underwent 
Now you should ask me a question, sir, for each one, it is sometimes 28 days, sometimes 29 days, and it is, it is related to the moon, it is related to the lunar. So if that is the question, the answer is very simple. Similarly, it's with a question that you find it with different versions of the Bible, whether you write it with the New American version or the New King James version or the King James version or any version for that matter, you will find this reference with the dates and the number of time which it has goes astray or goes outside the picture. Now, coming to the very question of all these things or all these ideas that we have, we also should understand one very prominent, uh, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, idea into the text. One very prominent feature into the text, which which it says that the very existence of the text or the very existence of these foundations that we find has a relevance of anything where the time was calculated in certain instances only through women and these kinds of places that we had. Now, going ahead from here, we have great amount of poor poems which are written or you know great amount of poetry which is written celebrating it one of those things which i read when when you read it with transgenders you find something called button poetry similarly is with a question that you find it when when you when you find uh you know with the with the with the poems of uh, when you when you find with poems like that where it says woman wrote her mom told grown up her sister explained responsibility her teacher reminded the society jeered. Now, this is something which you find it into it, where, where, where the person is caged just because of a biological change that is happening into the person. Now, the whole question is, uh, you know, I wanted to draw the attention of the biological changes of both the men and the women later at one point of time, because my, my lecture concentrates on that too. My lecture concentrates on, on that feature. My lecture concentrates on that as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Razina. Uh, sir, sorry to interrupt. Uh, really sorry. I had some trouble downloading that. This is the first screen, sir. So when you just say, I'll uh, move this screen on yeah screen. i am i am in the third uh, screen i think oh. i'm in the third slide yeah yes see here it says woman would her mother told grown up her sister explained the responsibility her teacher reminded cage the society g so now all these things have one very thing is common but the word caged is everything is capitalized so the very question that we have to understand is the outer or the exterior experiences that we have but then you're caged because of the social situations that we have been into now Kamala Das, you know, preferably I, I chose her because she had also written unlike, unlike Emily Dickinson also whom I had seen so it says part respectability the most respectable persons are the mummies all wrapped in lay layers and layers of gorge so now you know you know Kamala Das is not only speaking about how being wrapped a woman being wrapped in different sheets of paper incident or one very beautiful instance that is a very beautiful novel called Udupu by, by Sarah Joseph. The very, very opening line of the opening page of the line speaks about this place called the Irtamuri, which, which speaks about you know, uh, you know, it speaks about the way how this lady is menstruating and that Colombi that it speaks about and that and the way how this lady is all there for three days where where, you know, even the banana is ripened in that place in that heat in the dark in that in that kind of a place. So is there this question where three days of this lady staying there? Is it is this lady being ripened for something? The writer also there, Sarah Joseph, who is also making it a point of saying that she is not making it to write anything. She's not ripening, but then, but then if she's ripening for what? Consuming for whom? 
and for, for for what situation is this is this whole situation that is consumed enough is what is something that we find it here and then one very beautiful line which i could also write is that if a book is a substitute for a man fiction preferably so this is uh, this is not something where when i'm speaking from this point of view i should i should first make it very particular with all of you and that is i'm not speaking from the point of view of a male gaze or from a male chauvinism or or neither from the point of view that i'm trying to be sympathetic towards women's ideas and things related to that i wanted to just present the idea because this is one social situation that we have where 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 there are differences there are identities there are social situations there are conventional features there are ideological differences when you come to certain identical things that we have where where when when i when i took over as uh, you know the uh, the chairperson of this of the department the first thing that happened with me was there was a girl who came to me and said saying that sir uh, i have my period i said like okay fine go for two days i'm giving you leave and she went the next month also she came and asked me i said like how come every month because i am not someone or i am not an individual who is aware of this feature stating that it is it is something which happens every month thanks for my friend who who enlightened me with so many things that i think i think i should thank her with a you know with a golden band with because because she she gave me that idea more representative more identical than what was necessary madam the next slide now uh, this is the very place from where all this menstrual narrative that we are unable to speak begins now it says numbering women as the second sex is the result of colonialism post colonialism never disproved it it means to say that when i say the second sex i don't mean to say some on the beauvoir there I, i i am making a point of here the very question is that this concept of menstrual cycle how exactly women are supposed to behave what is the very situation in which they are supposed to be and what kind of lifestyle are they supposed to be establishing themselves with and how exactly is the the convention that they are supposed to follow what kind of roots do they should they take it up is what is something that indians know quite well that's the reason we find temples like kujrao or for that matter the the the, the menstruating temples in india we find we find we find all those instances there this was an existence this was uh, this was a point where women were given a lot of privilege during the mughal era thanks for the books that were written thanks to romila thapar who has made a point of representing these features in her books where mughals made it a point to write all these things or even for that matter the persians made a point of giving giving a lot of importance for menstruating women where even the even the harem was closed on those days where more than six women were menstruating where men were not supposed to be allowed and 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 uh, the and and women were given such kind of privileges that they were made to sleep in jewels they were made to sleep on all soft kind of things particularly the uh, the the peacock feathers so this is what is something which uh, romila thapa says but one very point of view that all of us should understand is that this question of menstruation or periods became a taboo only when we found this instance of we being colonized by the british because the british had the history of christianity which was which was then translated by from the bible which was when translated by the king james version where that that very format in which they were into it they did not have any instances with regard to this there is there are only two instances in the entire bible where we speak about the menstrual ideas one is about the way how moses tells in uh, you know in the book of exodus that you find it in noah's time and the other one is the book of leviticus where where you find how exactly they are supposed to be behaving and where they are supposed to stay and how exactly they are supposed to clean themselves so this cleaning themselves or purifying themselves is not only given as seven days time for the men women who are menstruating but also it is given for women 
who have had a childbirth you know who have had a childbirth and then they're supposed to have a seven day you know break and then after that they're supposed to bring the child to the temple so this is one very uh, prominent idea that we share this is one very prominent you know structure that we share in a society like ours where where where, where these kinds of situations are down so when when we were colonized by them when we were when we were colonized by people uh, into into these kinds of social situations we certainly had a situation we certainly did have a, a, a social structure we certainly did have a social feature by which it was not only them that they did not speak about there were people who did not make a point of bringing all these things into reality where those were not spoken and the moment we see white men we never made a point of telling anything to them because the white men always looked at the black woman or the brown woman from the point of view of saving them but these were things which were which women were did not you know sufficient or they were not comfortable telling it to the white man because they felt saying that they would colonize us this also into the future which become which became a question by which you find those very famous story of you know uh, you know which is written by manu pillai or for that matter when you write it with uh, uh, you know paramal murugan who also writes all these who also write all these kinds of very very uh, you know initiating and reflecting kind of stories that we see now post colonialism after the colonizer left we never made a point of discussing these things we never made a point of bringing all these things into light bringing all these things into the picture of the social world that we had and now the western world colonized it again but you know and unlike the way we had uh, you know yoga was originated in india and it went abroad and it came back to us in a different you know in a different cycle similarly when i say western world colonized it again our indian ideas of akamha devi so this is one uh, you know sharana sahitya you know a 12th century poet poetess who happened to have rebelled against her husband and and then she and she rebelled so much against her husband because he he touches her during the the menstrual cycle of the per woman and during the time when when she is worshiping lord shiva whom she calls as chennamallikarjuna so when she is when she is making it that point when she is unable to you know feel him she rebels against him in such a way that she removes everything that she is wearing she she disrobes her and she gives it uh, you know get, throws everything to that man and she walks out of the house and she walks the whole of karnataka where covering the whole body with her hair okay we have a university in karnataka called akamaha devi university where she covers the entire body with her hair so the very question that you find here is also something which you find it with regard to the way how i mentioned it earlier with the books of uh, manu pillai as well as perumal murugan that we share where it says akama devi or women in kerala and tamil nadu never got into our minds where when we are speaking about them we always speak about the modernized women we always speak about women who have who have undergone this kind of a situation where you are unable to speak you are unable to tell you are unable to confess you are unable to express so these become become the become the elemental feature these become the elemental ideas where where you are unable to speak but the whole question is also something where if you are unable to speak the, there are two reasons which we have to understand one is there is a person who is not able to understand it the very question is that most of the men whom we have into the world who have children also also know that there is something called a menstrual cycle that a woman undergoes but then there is no men who have attempted to write it it is because it is not that it is it was considered dirty or it was considered you know unhygienic it was considered a time when purification was going on it was not that it was a question by which a complete detail of that the woman does not say because if you go to ask the woman makes it a point to express the idea because she is undergoing a pain and the result that comes out is not something which the man can understand at that point of time so understanding a woman is that give her whatever she asks for give her whatever she is bringing it for this is cocooning the woman this is cocooning the very very idea of the woman that that you are given what you are asked but you are not able to express i think i should i should tell all these things because there is one very important feature most of the temples that we have today has as i said in the other point it says covering the lower part of the body is always a convention for both the genders 
you have to kind of cover the lower body but the torso is always a symbol of chivalry and religiosity and not the inferior or the caudal which means the lower part of the body is called the caudal where that that covering that part of the body is considered the most important point where covering the upper part of the body is nowhere considered a question of religiosity nowhere considered the very identity of things which we have so now the whole question is that things which are seen below the belt are not only seen from the point of view stating that it is considered dirty or it is considered illiterate or it is considered something very tabooed it is because the information that you find with the kind of literature that is around is not what is something that is representative now i will speak about the modern agendas of this uh, madam the next slide yeah it says menstruation of periods is a taboo for women but not for men who have nightfall now this is something which i should i should really seriously speak about which is women have this menstrual period where it begins on that night and then and they have the flow and it happens with the very question where it is painful certainly certainly it is it is quite painful but let's put this question very very prominent and ask saying that there are men who make a point of eating a lot of chicken or fish or you know they have they have something very romantic idea into the dream that happens and there is a nightfall that happens this is never discussed this is this is never forget about the madam who spoke earlier she spoke about you know masturbation is spoken you know so open and fine and things like that madam forget about masturbation which is a lively act which you do you know you know you know speaking you know you know making making it very prominent with all your ideas which is which is very conscious but then when it comes to the question of your menstrual period which happens at a particular time when you do not know the same is the question with the nightfall which happens with men which 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 is not conscious at all it is not conscious at all you are in your dreams and there are things that happen in your dream that i should go back, back again to freud to 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 describe the very question of dreams that there but then the very question that you find here is that this question of the nightfall that happens the next day when you uh, you know wake up with a wet pants you know how how the first thing that you question you think of is how do i walk out from the room to the washroom how do i how do i even put that cloth to wash so these are things which are there this is not represented anywhere this is not a question that is happening it is not something where i'm trying to find a defensive idea which is spoken about which is spoken about the very question of how exactly i'm trying to draw parallelism between the menstrual pain that happens and here the question that you have there the very question here is that this also happens but the whole question is that the literary forum that we are into the literary idea that we are into the device of the situation that we are into does not find a space to speak all this because the kind of readers that we have are either over matured or they are quite simple so when when this is the situation that we have we always make it a point to tell them we always make it a point to express our ideas in such a way that we think saying that it is somewhere closely related to pornography it is somewhere related to pornographic ideas where that we are not discussing these things and then it says procreation is always seen with women but men are away from these procreating identities roots take these back to barbarism and family where the moment the institution called family was established men and women started staying together where women were given the responsibility of guarding the fire at home okay they were given the responsibility of guarding the fire at home this is an anthropological uh, you know reading that i have done but then when the question of family that it comes of feeding or hunting and bringing it getting a house constructed is something which comes to the responsibility of men safeguarding fire is not that easy in a place where all these things happen now the whole question that you find is all of us have read this you know school story where there is a there is an old woman who had that fire you know because of 
the, if, if she had not given the fire and there is no sunrise that can happen. So this situation that we have does not bring us into a differential world, does not bring us into a differential social, you know, metamorphism that we are into. And apart from that, if you are discussing that family is one very important or one very prominent idea that you are discussing here, the very question of family that happens here is that it is it is the cycles that she has to undergo. She undergoes all the three cycles like the spring, the autumn and the rainy that you find. The similar is the question that it is related to nature because it happens in her body. This this does not happen in a man's body. It is because of that reason. Women is related to nature. Women is brought very picturesque, picturesque to nature because she is shedding everything that is old because she has to become new. She has to become very clean in herself. This does not happen in a masculine world where the only thing that with happens with a masculine world, which happens with new, which happens with identity, which happens with new, new creation is only where, where you either go for a haircut or you go for a shave or you go for a you know gym or you go for anything where new things happen or sometimes when you, when you, you know, get yourself gulped up drunk. This is what is something that you find it with the very question that we find. Now, uh, Madam, the next slide and now knowledge about gender or knowledge about body is always gendered we know our body the very question is that the body that we are living here is something which is different from our own perspective it is different from our own point of view it is different from our own uh, you know ideological status that we are you know questioning with our uh, you know features that we have one very beautiful picture i think i don't think i have uh, been able to put that picture here into it there's one very very beautiful picture that you have uh, you know you know in the uh, in, in in the in the uh, museum in brazil which says that the museum has a chandelier which is created by jo uh, jonas vascolnios and he makes it a point of, of, of writing it in such a way that the museum ceiling is exactly like a sanitary pad. And the whole question is that if you have to see that chandelier, you exactly had to make it a point of, of, of showing the whole chandelier from the point of view stating that you have to either touch that or it is at the, that place where you cannot touch it. The beginning of it, you cannot make a point of touching it. It's only the central point of view which you can touch it. So this is exactly the way how exactly the you know the the, the chandelier is and exactly the menstrual you know blood which is dropping exactly like that it is. There are two symbols that it says. One is you cannot touch. Men cannot go there. This is one. The second instance is that how far can you reach up to that point? These are two things which which it says. Then when you say that the knowledge about your body is always gendered, it is given from the idea that it says that there are social reflections, there are social ideologies, there are social you know, metamorphisms that happen into this textual feature, into this textual ideological status that we are into. So these things or these identities, these sociological features become the being, become the person, become the individual that we are today. Then construction of binaries like nature or nurture or sex or gender or real or constructed exist for the survival of every individual. So it is, it is existing that these are binaries that we live into this world and these binaries exist from the point of view that they are constructed for every individual, whether it is the man or the woman or the trans or anyone for that matter. The whole question is that the except these two genders let's bring it back to the very picture that we are into so the very question is that if we are bringing ourselves back into the very feature that we are here into this world where women menstruate and men have a nightfall this privilege is not with any other minuscule gender that we find whether it is an lgbtq community or the ia community or anything plus that we live into the world they do not have this privilege so just because we have that privilege, that does not mean to say that we have to cocoon ourselves only to that. If at all we are lending it, what can we lend? A woman after her period can lend a baby. 
a man after his nightfall or after his you know after his masturbating idea or after he has had physical physical relationship with anyone he can have a baby but then this does not happen with anything with the other genders as well this is again cocooning them where they are sexing the body as well this justifies the title of my paper where it says that i am not only justifying the very identity of this but also there is a question ed edited there is a question uh, you know created there is a question met metamorphically you know you know constructed with these kinds of things and it says changing definitions of sexuality is always addressed to women globalization threw light on the changing phases of men too so sexuality when it comes to women so it the, you know there are, there are, it is always addressed to women so exactly how was she supposed to behave and and there is there's something called nude makeup you know and the moment we listen to this word all of us will start thinking saying that nude makeup is nothing else but you know you know somebody being there you do the makeup to such an extent that you don't make it a point to say that it is it is somewhere the person has done makeup or a nude lipstick that we share this is what is something that we find it with regard to this but thanks to globalization where there are multiple identities for women except there was very question called transgender which where the man is identifying himself with features of transferring himself into a woman translating himself into a woman or unlike the way you find you find the very question of the gay or you find the way how exactly a a, a neutral or an indecisive that we find into the world where 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 we find the very question of men are being into the very question they are again into another format of a minuscule minority they are again into a format of a minuscule identity that we share so this is something which we you know uh, which we have to express ourselves into that and then uh, you know one very uh, very prominent thing that you also speak is that human lifestyle is completely donned with symbol menstruation is a symbol menstruation and its symbol is the entity of women so here this is one symbol where you find it is as an entity as an individual as an identity for women it is not something which which can be taken over by anybody else it is something which is an individual you know existence it is something which is which is a sociological picture it is it is a it is a creative identity that that we make a point of relating it only to them but we cannot make it a point of saying it as as a picture as as a social uh, you know relevance into into women that we share but but when it comes to the question of this is what is something which which i meant to say or which i meant to identify as the cocooning metaphor where where you are you're cocooning yourself into that and you are you are you are creating a world within yourself and you are unable to express and you make a point of dying into that itself that the silk is given the silk here can be the values of women the silk here can be the very you know identity of women the silk here can be the very 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 comfort level of the way how exactly it is and family as it is and then it says uh, symbols are identity symbols of identity are not enclosed this is a discourse where outside this discourse nothing exists so very question is that this is a symbol the very question is that this symbol is not enclosed with anything else it is a discourse in itself there has to be a very elaborative identity of discoursing this into this picture but there is nothing that exists outside this discourse which means to say that this discourse that we are making it a point of expressing is not making us understand anything related or anything compared or anything either in comparison or anything either in uh, either either in objective feature that we share and then it says uh, the first development of a girl towards women could start with menstruation so it is easily related to marriage so you know the moment the moment you are you know menstruated you are related to marriage where it is called the kanyadan why you call it kanyadan is because you are 
giving the girl before the you know before she completes the first menstrual cycle before she completes the first menstrual identity so she is given in marriage because because she is for after the first menstrual cycle it takes a lot of time for her to have the second menstrual cycle so before that period you are married because you are given as a virgin so this is the point from where before the next cycle or before the next cycle that happens you're given in marriage later when the colonization happened related to the word called virginity virginity is not kanyadan virginity is not related to the very question of kanyadan virginity is a colonizer's language virginity is a colonizer's appreciative feature which speaks completely different ideas that you are finding to speak into the world and then it says the these brooding identities of the western world were created by rousseau and godot where when you find this you know godot's identity but you find these these kinds of uh, you know social situation where you find these kinds of uh, you know limitations that we have had uh, you know does not does not at any point of time make it a prominent idea make it a prominent structure in 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 developing itself uh, and then it says Seven years of age, particularly whether it is a boy or a girl, in the Catholic world, it is considered the dawn of the moral consciousness. So you are morally conscious at the age of seven. So at the age of seven, people start giving them catechism classes. Similarly, is with a question that happens at the age of this, at the age of seven, for a girl, there are so many identities there are so many related ideas which are given to that girl because you are very sure five years from now she is going to ministry similarly is so with a question for the boys that after the age of 12 you are going to be at this point of time so you are going from one level of the pupa to the cocooning level you are growing yourself from the pupa, pupa level to the level of cocooning where the Greek paintings of cultures, Greek paintings and sculpture of penis was edited from just from an exclamation to a dash. So here the question is that the Greek paintings that we see of, of David or of anyone for that matter, we always find something very prominent happening into it. We always find something very, very, very crystal, very, very, very comfortable happening into it, very, very junctural happening into it. So how do you relate that as a situation? How do you relate that as, as an individual into the very, uh, very, very, very structuration that we exist as it is? Uh, Madam, the next slide. Now, now anthropological fantasies in uh, you know uh, anthropological fantasies in the debate over the cycle stopping contraception this is a quote from laura jones where anthropological fantasy is only about how a cycle stops the very question is that as i said earlier if you take anything in nature it has a cycle for example the ecological cycle the cycle of a butterfly the cycle of a of 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 a, of, of rain water the cycle of a tree the cycle of nature but then this is the very question that you find that this objectivity please understand this very clearly very very clearly this objectivity that we find where you have found the existence, you find the very idea that this change in nature, this change in idea, this change in sociological thinking, which has brought anthropological surveys into the picture, is transcended into the human being because of the cycle. So the woman becomes the cycle under which the man is the power, that is the Shakti and the, you know, the you know the, the 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 shakti idea of the man and the woman that it comes but the very question that you find which is more prominent more instigating here into it is that that this shakti idea of the man is slowly going away towards money finance world idea not with the physical strength okay it actually included all these things but then it did not representatively bring these things into picture but then with women because she has a cycle, she's completely happy with the cycle because she knows that everything can be regenerated with her. 
everything can be newly adopted everything can be newly identified with her though it goes wrong so this is what something which you find it with the very existence of the cycles that we have and then it says the whole idea of menstruation is so formal like a victorian novel that it begins and ends unlike a single line story but we readers develop a post modern zone of interpretation to it so it begins there is there are, there's a time that happens and then there is a there is a character who comes who falls in love there is a there is a problem that is there there is a there is a trouble there is a discourse and he goes into trauma and then he comes out and then he finds an answer and then there is a universal message that you give this is this is how most of the victorian novels are written similarly it is with the question with the way how exactly we have to see if you are trying to see these things from a post modern point of view where you want to begin the end in somewhere and begin with something else it it does not justify us ourselves with with the very uh, you know literary question that we have been sharing ourselves with in one very beautiful book it says that i being born women and suppressed by ki the corona corinia celebrates the various stages or the milestones the milestones of women which has specific goals so the very question is that once you are you know you are a young woman who have had this as a feature you have you need to have another goal you need to have a children then you the next thing you have another goal this as interpretation goes interpretations have become the fact these days so you do not make a point to say that the goals are not the goals are seen as things which are specific things are things which are which are indifferential things which are completely unmodulated as it is and it says the gurhangim museum i spoke about it and it says in bilban spain has a chandelier created by a portuguese artist joana vascolnios named the sanitary device okay I, i spoke to you and it says that it's a script it's a sculptural apparatus for the both for the glorification and the critical meditation on men trying to get up there i've put that in single inverted comma because how are you going to get up there is a transgender trying to go there or 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 a man who or or a person who tries to become a gay is he trying to go there or a person who's gone for a gender change is he trying to go there or how far are you coming out of your cocoon are and you are making it a point of going up to there is what is something that it speaks and it says this voice against the taboo is unconsidered to be the voice against the popular culture so this voice which you are raising raising against all these sociological forms all this is considered to be a thing against the social uh, image against the social uh, you know reflection against the social idea that we have been you know reflecting ourselves into reflecting the reflecting the very 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 structural feature into it and it says if it is uh, you know it, it it is it is making me uh, making making it very clear with with the very idea that it is uh, it is very different it is very conventional it is very you know comfortable with the very level of existence that we share and here it says the voice against the taboo though it is considered uh, you know unconsidered voice against popular culture people like guy deluge of that metaphilish gutari identify this rupture as a phallocentric network so if you are not questioning the popular culture if you are accepting the popular culture if you are not identifying traditionally accepted or rejected features into popular culture you are making it a point of identifying the rupture into the phallocentric network you are you know you're bringing it into the very question of you know into the into the phallocentric identity that you have and then here it becomes a question that it says becoming the woman of history is to deal need the trans mobilization of the desire of a man so which means to say if you are a woman in history you are not you are delineating yourself you are removing yourself from the different needs of men are completely different from the different needs of women where it is it is not the very question of desire of men which becomes the central element but then it becomes a central element where where there are different needs at different point of time how far are you translating yourself how 
how far are you transferring yourself how far are you mobilizing yourself how far are you you know you know moving yourself from one element of necessity to the other which means to say which begins you know which brings us back again to the same concept that it says that you know you know you, know, you create things you know you know all these you know elemental features all these elemental ideas differ us bring us into the into the very 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 structured feature that we have been telling ourselves into and then he he uh, madam the next slide yeah and now this is something which uh, which really had a shock of my life i could not uh, bear it and that is i could not uh, digest when somebody like emily dickinson was writing a poem like this it is not that uh, i don't want her to write but then it is it is it is very simple that that i wanted her to write something very very prominent very objective but then because i've seen her poems only on death then you know salvation and then heaven and then all pain related i did not expect her to write it on these elements so it is it is my it is my mistake that i did not expect certain things not happening because i re, i re even read it that that I, i i found that she has written about many other things as well then women can initiate artistic process in relation to vital flows of desire based on sexual difference which is loose arigeri's term a french feminist he says that there is an artistic process in relation to the vital flow of desire also we always say that menstrual period is only about the blood flow we do not think saying that it begins from the head i have that in the next slides as well where where it begins from the head then it begins from the mind it begins from the food that you eat it begins with the very calculation of the body and then it comes out of that is that considered is it probable that we live in a society where if the menstrual instance happens for women not through the very process in which it is happening or which is happens there if it happens from any part of the body is it considered in the same taboo is it seen from the same point of view of the taboo this is not told so the creator is now into another cocoon this is not mentioned so this is another cocoon into which he is so this are these are the different cocooning metaphors that we are bringing ourselves into see the poem it says the name of it is autumn as i said earlier it is related to nature so it is related again the name of it is autumn the hue of it is blood an artery upon the hill a vein along the road green great globules in the alleys and oh the shower of strain when winds upset the basin and spills scarlet rain it sparkles bonnets far below it gathers ruddy pools then eddies like a rose away upon a vermilion wheels so here so here you know though it is emily dickinson who is writing he she is making it a point of uh, you know bringing the very 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 uh, junctural idea the junctural Uh, you know feature that it 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 matters into the very structure that we have now i think i'm probably in the last two slides i suppose and it says a revolution is necessary for the discourse and eradication of the taboo so what is this movement what is this revolution so one of the revolutions which i could find through bit of reading of mine and research of mine was that it was by kiran gandhi where where the newspaper called the independent has uh, uh, has documented it in 2015 it says i ran with blood dripping down my legs for sisters who didn't have access to tampons and hid it away as though it doesn't exist i ran to say it does exist and we overcome it every day so this is one point of view of revolution if you understand this book or this idea or this knowledge that you find is is a level of experimentation is a level of experimental identity which we share and it says metamorphosis of a bourgeois blessing so here this is a change that we find it as a blessing for any bourgeois because these are things which you find this is the category under which you find a book a, a movie like the padman that comes 
this is this is what is something which you find where the you know unlike the way you things which are here into the world which speaks about padman which speaks about you know a toilet ki katha or 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 movies which are into those kinds of differential features these are things which you want to become complete these are things which you want to become the 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 level of question agency that we have and now he says the new blood the third wave feminism and the politics of menstruation so this is a dialogue this is a this is a concept which i've taken it from 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 the book that is there and it says the unknown origin and existence of patriarchy became the rallying cry today if you go by the by origin of patriarchy there is no history to it there is no origin to it there is no place from where and we have just the very following depending on the number of men who have taken care of number of women the very question is that you find the same kind of things with the cane cutters in the caribbean island that we find where marquis also writes about them the number of women and the number of men who are taking care of them so this becomes the very question that you find and even for that matter when you write the very question this is very very important now the the moment this is considered the women i have using a post colonial term here other is not only an alter ego but also the individual idea as we say you cannot have the you cannot have the cake and have it too you are taking it the other and you are making it a point of differentiating yourself if you are bringing it back together you need to bridge yourself into the woman this is what is something which biblically proves to say that it is that the man and the woman should be of one body and they should live together this is what is something which proves the very idea that it says that there are there are so many things that we have been into existence and it says every period in literature has a movement the movement results into literature as the literature popularizes the movement dies without any primordial which is <coughs> before a need piece of literature that has been into there is a movement that has happened there is a school that has started the school starts a movement and the movement results into pieces of literature and the pieces of literature result or bring out pieces of criticism what happens to that movement where exactly does that movement go how does it die when did it die we simply write in the classroom saying that you know the oxford movement started at this point and died at this point the first wave of feminism started here and died at this point of time the the uh, the, the black mountain school of poems poets you know started at this point of time and died symbolist movement started here and died all these things began and there there is a, there are pieces of there is a there is an orb of literary works that all of us know and where it began and where it ended but then all of us should understand something very prominently into the book and that is where did we find the message in where did the movement go i find a very prominent idea into this piece of literature also which is that which is which is which is also into that this is a movement that we are doing unlike the way you know people started movement on gender studies long ago thanks to judith butler thanks to thanks to uh, eva sedgwick kosfoski thanks to michel foucault thanks to uh, you know uh, freud that we that we have people who have been into the sterling's books into the these kinds of things where where we are kind of where we are kind of asking of searching questions into 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 all these kinds of things where where we are completely different from the social view where we are completely different from the sociological identities that we have had so this idea is what is something where we have started the movement now we have started the fight it will result into literature i'm damn sure five years from now we all are going to be writing about all these things into our books if at all we people have uh, you know a, a sledge of pen and writing and things related to that but after the next five years i'm damn sure eight years from now this movement that acharya college has started through through the organizers like uh, madam razina or for that matter uh, the principal or for that matter the head of the department of pg department of english all these people it is not going to be in that stage because this is what is the history of movements that we have had this is what is the history of if of of developmental identities that we have had this is what is something which is completely necessary in a world like us 
and it says menstruation does not have a binary it has it just has individuality this relates us to nature culture and uh, the perfection or the imperfection that we have <laughs> uh the, i i i i i also make it a point to say stating that the menstruation does not have the binary here you do not have anything by which it happens unlike during the beginning of my lecture i said saying that this happens with women and this happens with men but the whole question is that the pain the process the very question of the way how the taboo it is seen it is not related to men it is of two important reasons one is that unlike the way the men also do not speak about it to the society women also did not speak about it to society this relates me to the slide where i made a point to say saying that men are, or the society that we are we are always related ourselves with our identity with the way how we gender ourselves with the way how we describe ourselves into the very picture that we share uh, madam the next slide yeah there is there is this uh, you know question which is very prominent it says simultaneous production and productivity results in non dualistic accounts of body so there is there is this simultaneous production of features that happens this productivity that happens there is non dualistic account of the body which happens where where you are not only making it a point of describing yourself from 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 the very level of existence from the very level of the body that we find where writers like judith butler or for that matter foster sterling whose book called sexing the body is what is something that we share argue that body is a system of simultaneity which has meaning when a biological process exists so your body is alive only when a biological process exists now we should ask me a question how about a priest and a nun how about people in the religious order how about people who have renounced themselves does it the, Do, do they also have these kinds of biological stages that they happen if there is no biological stage that happens how do they relate themselves what is the very question that they have and then development studies particularly when we say they has no binocular or not telescope towards this taboo so there is development studies where they develop the land the people the society the culture and so many things this is what is something where you find a very important aspect to be to be discussing to be to be to be representing yourself with to be you know speaking your ideas with that and it says menstruation is a result of the development of brain sex glands hormones and finally the genitals blaming just one organ will not result into the specificity of the social spectrum so you are not supposed to be blaming yourself into the very feature that we have into the very 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 idea that we have uh into uh into the very structural element that we share into the very structural you know social situation that we have related ourselves but and then it says the two sex system as the words uh, as in the words of german physician theodor albrecht klebis is true and pseudo form of hermaphrodites which means to say it is either true of the way how it is or it is a pseudo form of the way how exactly the gender forms exist so this is what is something that we share our idea this is what is something that we you know put ourselves into it and this and it says there can be no immediate fixing using the ideology of the intersexed genitals with our flexible or emerging theories of gender studies so either we where we are, you know for the reason that you are undergoing a man or a woman unlike the way we have to relate it to tiresias now who who was a woman you know who was a man became a woman and then he was you know he found that both the lives are very difficult and things like that all these things you cannot make it a point of bringing an ideology because it is not only an immediate effect that we have unlike the way we have this term called pro feminist of person with feminism similarly through the question where you have to coin a terminology for women who are undergoing menstruation and the men who understand that and write about it discuss about it or rather i'm i'm using a very wrong grammatical word that i say discuss about it it is grammatically wrong but still i have to put it across to state the very 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 feature with which all these things have been expressively spoken and then it says 
there can be no immediate fixing. Oh, sorry. Nature gives us both masculinity and femininity in equal proportions. The, inter the imperatives of the society convenes it into different minuscule minorities, which means to say the way how you are imperating yourself and the way how the society, the conventions of the society is creating different minuscule minorities. The kind of population we have, the kind of social thinking we have, develops ourselves into these kinds of situations we have. Now, borders, if you're doing it again, the borders that exist, that begin again with the visible sight. The border is between the way how you think about a man, the way how another person thinks about a man. And then bridging the needs would be more difficult even for a capitalistic empire like the British, which ruled us for painful amount of time so the very question is that even for a capitalistic you know environment a ruling co company <coughs> like the east india which ruled us for such a long time also does not make it a point to discuss this as an element discuss this as the the uh, the, the structuring feature structuring ideas that we have where where even they cannot make a point of bringing out of this difference each individual now, unlike the most important surrealistic painting that we have, where all of us have our own cross to bear, all of us have our own idea to bear, because it is the way how we are thinking. The thinking is the sexual orientation that we have. You think about a man, you think about a woman, you think about a gay, you think about a lesbian, you think about trans, you think about an indecisive, you think about a queer, you think about so many other things. So you are thinking about your way, so you are bordering yourself, you're drawing your line into it where you don't cross the other. The fruits of it going into other to quote frost is to bring the very idea to state that both of you are making it a point of bringing it the idea to live together for a point of time where the fruits of it is what benefit what identity you gained from the society in which you are you're sharing it with the other but then is it acceptable in the other is it bringing it into the other? Are you forming a cocooning feature again when you're sexing your body into it? How are you sexing your body with the way how exactly the things that transcend from the brain to the body to the genital is not considered very legal as an origin, unlike a mathematical solution that comes. It comes only at the end with the way how the answer is here presented. This is what is a presentation that I have for this. Thanks to the, for the opportunity. Uh, thanks to Miss Rosina for for all these questions for for this opportunity, and I thank uh, uh, the college and the management of the college for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Please.